So for some people, Gran Canaria is a short haul holiday, a chance to enjoy the sunshine, chill out by the pool, maybe do some shopping in the Yumbo Center, grab a few drinks at night, a bite to eat, or party hard. But today, in this vlog, I wanna show you there's a different side to the island. We're flying in to the capital, Las Palmas, the third largest of the seven Canary Islands and the gateway to West Africa. The weather's good all year round, and normally it's my go-to destination for a chance to recharge after a hectic few months. The journey to Playa de Ingles takes you around 40 minutes and will set you back around £5 on a shared bus or 30 by private taxi. If you're looking for a colonial style building with a spot of luxury, the Rio Palace, surrounded by its subtropical garden and the famous dunes of Mas Palomas, is a fairly good choice. Now, buses are frequent, but personally, I like to get out and about, and to make things simple, we decided to hire a car for a few days. Wrong side. <laughs> Try again. Just make sure your car comes with a sat-nav. So first stop today is Barranco de la Vacas, which is um, a really Instagrammable place uh, where the stones have been carved out over centuries of uh, water. So it looks pretty cool in the pictures. We're off to find it. Well, after a 30 minute drive from Mas Palomas, high up into the mountains above Aguimes, we've managed to find Barranco de la Vacas. But a quick word of warning, don't Google map that destination because it'll take you somewhere completely different as we discovered. You want to search for Tobas de Calores del Banco de la Vacas and it'll bring you here, where be warned, there are just two car parking spaces to go and check out these amazing rock forms. So my advice, get here early. For me, this Spanish ravine is one of the island's hidden gems. Tucked away with no signpost, the path can be pretty steep, so be prepared for a short hike. Well, this is Barranco de la Vacas, where over thousands of years, the water has carved some amazing sights into the stone. Amazing. With its different shades of beige, red, and terracotta rock forms, these stones seem to change in colour with the sunlight, but it's soon time to head on to the next stop. Well, Aguimes is a small, quaint, traditional and municipal town here on the island of Gran Canaria. It's a short drive from the airport, and surrounding the town are these bronze artworks. Now, this is a donkey, which signals the farmers bringing down all the produce from the barrancos or the mountains to sell here in Aguimes. And the one historic landmark you're looking for to find this place is this place, San Sebastian Church. It is ginormous. With its cobble streets and the Plaza del Rosario, this is a good place to see the island's most traditional identity and some amazing charm among the many terracotta houses. You can literally spend hours searching these back streets and around every corner is a different bronze sculpture. They're designed to commemorate the beauty, the character and the history of the town, but all this walking can be thirsty work. So we've come inside a quaint little local cafe that's so picturesque to get some coffee and cake. Oh, so next stop is Rock Nublo in Tejida, considered one of the biggest crags in the world. It's about an hour away from Aguaim, so let's uh, let's go find it. With pretty incredible views, you really get a feel for the way the volcanoes over thousands of years have shaped the landscape, which is visible throughout our journey to the second highest point on the island. 
Now, the car park does get busy, so once again, it's best to arrive early. There are guided walks, which will set you back around £70 per person, but personally, it's a fairly straightforward trek, which is easily signposted. So the third stop today is a place called Tejida to Rock New Blow, which is about 1,813 metres above sea level. It's one of the largest natural crags in the world, and it dates back to the Aborigine times. But by send out of breath, it's quite a trek up through the mountains to get to this natural crag. So uh, pack prepared. It's 36 degrees in the sun today, so it's pretty hot. But I reckon it's worth it when we get to the top. And the views at the top are spectacular. It's also the place historically where people made sacrifices to the sun gods and uh, I think it worked. For me, this epic landscape is one of my top things to see in Gran Canaria. But if it's all too much energy for one day, well, you can simply enjoy a taste of Little Venice or Porta de Morgan with its small canals, perfect for a spot of lunch. It's also the starting point along with Puerto Rico for the more relaxing activities, including sunset cruises, dolphin watching, water sports, or simply the perfect place for a dip in the sea. Personally, I like to do both, so I've combined the afternoon with a chance to see more than just those fantastic beaches in a 4x4 buggy tour. We booked direct with a company called Buggy Pirates and saved 10%, but remember, you'll need your driving license as the journey combines road and off-road driving in one adventure. And if you're finding this vlog helpful so far, hit that subscribe button. Pretty awesome sight. There's plenty of stops along the way, and if you both want to go, there's a chance to change drivers. Just luckily for me, Nathan forgot his license. Now, I think it's fair to say that so far, there's been little in the way of the nightlife that the area is famous for. Well, all of that changes at the Yumbo, the place that comes alive at night. By day, a shopping hub and a great place to grab lunch. By night, it attracts people from all over the world, especially during special events like Pride in May and the fantastic Freedom Festival in October. Finally, in the extreme south of the island, you'll find the amazing sand dunes, which shift five metres a year, and the landscape changes every time I come back. But this isn't Saharan sand. These fine golden grains are crushed coral from over thousands of years. Well, if you're looking for the perfect backdrop to your holiday, this surely has to be it. The Maspalomas sand dunes, a thousand kilometers in a protected reserve and some of the best beaches anywhere in Europe. And if you ask me, one of the best ways to watch the sunset.
if you're looking to find them, the Mas Palomas Lighthouse is a great landmark to aim for, and then it's just a short walk. So that's it. If you found this useful, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button and comment below with your favourite part of the island. But until next time, adios.